Hi, my name is Frank White. I'm a senior Link Premier Field Engineer with Microsoft based out of Nashville, Tennessee. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the five most common things that I find configuration issues and performance issues at customers that are running Link 2013 and Link 2010. So let's kick things off. Probably the fifth most common configuration and performance issue we find is quality of service, QoS, not being implemented correctly or not being implemented on every network device throughout the entire uh, organizations. Nothing is more frustrating as an engineer than trying to troubleshoot why does the call work for my manager when he's sitting in his office in this building but when he goes to some remote location and makes a phone call it doesn't work as well. We've checked everything. Well, let's make sure that the network team is on board with us that, so that we've got all of the network devices enabled for quality of service, QoS, and that they're honoring the tags that Link is putting onto those packets in the way that we as Link engineers and Link administrators assume they're going to be honoring those tags. So let's just make sure that we've got all of our bases covered there. The next most common configuration or performance issue that we find when we're out in the field would have to be around VM hosts, virtual machine hosts. The machine that's actually running my link VMs, making sure that the virtual machine owner team, whoever manages that host, making sure that they have worked with us, worked through the white paper, and that that host is configured as Microsoft specifies. Making sure that things like the network cards have VMQ, virtual machine queuing enabled and that the driver on the host supports that so that our packets get from the network into the link machines in a much more timely fashion. Making sure that they have not configured uh, dynamic memory on our machines so that we don't get into a situation during a heavy conference load where we need to get more memory for the link virtual machine and we're delayed while the host is allocating that memory to us. We don't want those delays. We want to make sure we work closely with the, v, the virtual machine team and we configure the host per the white paper guidance from the product group. Probably the next most common thing that I see out there is around SQL performance. Uh, the SQL teams tend to treat Link as any other database application. And unfortunately, Link doesn't operate like any other database application out there. Link is real-time communication. Link needs to be able to get into the database quickly and make find the information it's looking for, whether it's presence information for somebody or whether it's trying to route a phone call. We need to get in, get that information, and get it back to the Link machines very rapidly. So we need to make sure we work with the SQL team to ensure that the performance on those SQL machines, disk, memory, CPU, are going to give us those uh, those responses back as rapidly as possible. We don't want our SPROC or stored procedure latency to be any higher than a few, and I mean few milliseconds. We need the information about Joe's presence right now, not five seconds from now. Probably the next most common thing that we find would be around the edge server external interfaces. Now, we all know once we go and put a machine into the demilitarized zone, the DMZ, that our security and our network personnel want to protect that machine. That's their job. So they like to put NATS, network address translation, on those external interfaces. They don't want those external interfaces to be sitting out there with a routable real IP address. On the edge server, we support one NAT and one NAT only. If you're going to use hardware load balancing, a hardware load balancer counts as a NAT device. So we then need to use real IP addresses on those external interfaces on the edge server so that we don't uh, violate the double NAT rule. We cannot have two NATs. If you are going to NAT those addresses, do away with the hardware load balancer and use DNS load balancing but make sure you communicate with management about the trade-offs that that entails for things like federating with customers that have older versions of Link, you know, back to the OCS days. We need to make sure that those office communication server customers can still communicate with us. 
The most common thing that we're seeing when it comes to Link 2013 and its performance issues and configuration issues are around front-end servers and the disk performance. Uh, front-end server disk performance was not an issue really in Link 2010 and previous versions of communication server because we did rely so heavily on SQL on our backend. Well, in Link 2013, we've moved a lot of that data from the SQL server onto the front-end server in the SQL Express that's running on the front-end server. So we need to make sure our disks are much more performant so that we can get that information rapidly out off of disk and into memory where we can utilize it. So again, make sure your front-end performance and your front-end servers are configured properly in a Link 2013 engagement.